So the next service we're going to do is say, what's in my sample? So click on tools and services, and then under metagenomics, click on taxonomic classification. Taxonomic classification, you can either submit read files or assembled contigs. So if you click on the assembled contigs icon here, it changes the interface. Maybe I went, got up a little bit too big there. And if you click on read files here, it's gonna allow you to access those reads. The taxonomic classification system uses Kraken 2, which was developed by Salzburg's group at the University of Maryland. I think that's where he currently is. And that's taking the genome, it breaks up the genome into small pieces called KMERS. And it, that's what makes it faster. And so it's running against those and looking for these small pieces that it thinks link to particular taxonomy or to particular species. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. In our other tab, let's go back into BVBRC workshop. So you can use the breadcrumb or you could go into workspaces and navigate there. And this time scroll down to taxonomic classification because once again, we're gonna use SRR numbers. So let's look at the README for that and click on the view icon. Up oh, here it is. It's the same guy from before. So copy this number and then let's go back up to the taxonomic classification system. Now we're working primarily on the SRR numbers because of speed and ease right now. But if you wanted to, you could upload your own data here to use that. So how do you do that? Well, one way I would do it would be to click here on this folder icon, and then I could navigate to the same folder or I could just put it in my home workspace. But if I were to navigate to the same folder, click it here, then up here, I can click the upload monitor. When I click on that, notice this, this is important. When you're going through the app, it's gonna look for exactly what's appropriate for that particular service. This service, the way I have it set right now is taking reads. So it's gonna look for reads in my computer. And it's got this handy dandy thing here that says, these are the typical file formats for reads, .fa, .fasta, .fq, .fastq. One of the problems is where people get confused is that contig files, contigs have already been assembled. They're no longer reads. Those files end in .fa and .fasta too. So you'll have to think about that and pay attention to that. So, but it's going to look specifically for reads. I'll say select that file. And let's see if I have any of my download. Yeah, so there's a couple that I have here. So I could go ahead. Actually, I can only upload them one at a time. So I can open that. And then it's, see, it's tagged as reads. And then I can click the start upload button. Or I could select the other file, click that one, and click open and then click Start Upload. And so once I've started that, you see this Upload Monitor? You can click on that and it's gonna tell me how quickly these things are loading and you wait to submit the job until it says 100% or the job's gonna fail. So you just have to wait. And if the files are big, it's gonna take a long time. And you have to wait on this page. But you know what? I don't even want to do that. So I'm going to get rid of that. But let's say I'm in the <coughs> workspace and not on that. So if I go to my home workspace and here's where all the shame generally starts in when my workspace becomes viewed by everybody. And I click on this folder. I navigate to the folder I want. And when this one's up there and now I, let's say, cause sometimes you might do a batch upload or something. Bob's gonna show you on the third day how you can use command line to do all these things. I'm gonna upload this stuff. Oh, look up here. It's unspecified. So it's gonna look for anything. I can tell it what I want, 
can click on that and tag it correctly, but as long as it's unspecified, the service can't see it. And we have it here when you're loading directly into the workspace because we don't know what you want to do with the stuff you're uploading in. And we don't right now have the ability to say, oh, this looks like reads. So we're going to tag it as reads. So when you're loading directly into the workspace, that's on you at this point. So if I were to leave it at that and I click on select files, now you can see everything in my computer is open game because it doesn't know what I want to do with it. I could open that one and start the upload on that. And then I would watch the upload monitor and it says it's 100%. If I go back to tools and services, well, we're in my account. I'm just gonna show you how to do it. Just take it from me that this one, when I see here, you can see it's tagged as reads. This one, it's not tagged as reads. And I get user questions a lot and people are really frustrated and they say, I uploaded my reads to your service and I'm trying to assemble it, and I navigate to the place in my workspace where it is, and I can't select it, I can't see it. And that's because it's not correctly tagged. So I have to tell them how to do this. And I would go into edit type for that particular one, and then I would go down and find reads and save it as that. And now when I click on it, oh, and look at the size of it, this thing's gonna fail. Anyhow, look at the different sizes between these two, but that's not my fault. It's somebody else's fault. I was helping them work through a problem and that was their fault. I mean, it's not their fault. It's the upload can be problematic, but now it's classified as reads. But don't worry, that's not the one we're going to do. So let's go back into tools and services, taxonomic classification. And this time we're going to put in that SRR number and we're gonna move it over to the selected libraries. And it's Kraken 2 and all genomes. And originally, before we had the alignment stuff, I used to get excited about this and think I wanted to save these things because I was really trying to do an alignment. This isn't the same thing. Remember, this service is based on KMERS, which are really small pieces. So it's gonna save the small pieces that map and those that don't map. So I'm not sure why anyone would want this, although I'm sure people in the room will be able to tell you that, but I never wanted. I used to save these and think I could assemble a genome out of that and found out after a week of working that that's not a good avenue. So the, the output folder, there it is, the same one. And the output name, I put that in there. And I'm going to put, this is the guy from Glacina and tax class August. So once I've named it, it's pretty simple service to use. Just click submit. It's been submitted. I generally wait until it says that has happened. So now <laughs> let's go back to workspaces and go into BBBRC workshop, go down to taxonomic classification, and then let's do this CC fly. So click on this. And here is the completed job. Double click on that. And then this one, there's several things that it gives you here, the taxonomic report and the different charts for it, the mapping data. So let's click on that for the taxonomic report. So imagine that this is your sample and you just wanna be sure it's a nice clean sample. It's showing you here that, oh, look, it mapped to a lot of the Wigglesworthia and the Rickettsia and Homo sapiens. Now, this is a reduced table of all the table that's in there. Actually, Kraken 2, it's a really good service, but I find that it overestimates things. And so I just use this as an indication this is not a gold standard for me. I prefer the alignment to this, but this tells me stuff. So it looks like there are a few things in there. And then here's a fun one. So let's click on this. Click here to view the interactive chart. 
Okay. And so there's a bunch with no hips and like you could hit on the bacteria here and double click on it. And then it's going to show you all the bacteria that are there. And then if I want to go back to that, so you can see that it's, there's a lot of stuff in there. Do I really think that all of that stuff is in this sample? No, I don't. Because remember, these are really small pieces that it's looking at. So it's going to overestimate the stuff that's in there. And note that you can take a snapshot of it if you want. Question. You could upload anything. I could upload Excel files. I can upload PDFs. I don't know if this is what you want, but if this will answer your question. Look, in this particular thing that we're going to do tomorrow, I put PNGs in there. I put PDFs in there. I put PowerPoints in there. I've got Word documents. I've got text documents. My question is, if I wanted to do classification for a particular isolate, I have my FASTQ files and I have my A files. Which is appropriate? Could I use the fast A files as well? On taxonomic classification? Yes, yes you can. Okay. So if I go here, the question was, if the reads have already been assembled, can I use taxonomic classification on them? So I'd click here on taxonomic classification, but this time okay. I'd click on assembled contigs. But now I want to go back to this and go back to the way it was. And this guy under eukaryota, I'm going to click on that. Click on this. Because this is what I would expect to be in the tsetse fly. It's Trypanosoma brucei, which is the causative agent of sleeping sickness. And so that was in their reads that map to that in this particular organism. Not only does it have bacteria, but it's also got eukaryotes nestling in there. And in fact, it's this one that I referred to you before. Trypanosoma brucei brucei is the causative agent of sleeping sickness in the African continent. And so that ends taxonomic classification. Oof.